so um, Macron is in Japan. Not only is Macron uh, telling everyone in France that uh, today is the liberation day of everyone who has vaccinations, and if you don't want a vaccine, you have to stay locked up in the basement of your house. Um, which, yeah, is kind of funny. I kind of agree with that, but um, I, I'm told that makes me the worst human being in the world at home, so I'm not saying too much about it. Uh, but there is a case at the moment of a uh, French man who is in the very common situation that I've talked about before. And bear in mind, it's not just... Uh, there is an image of this being typically foreign fathers, but it's actually not always the case. It's also the case often of foreign mothers, but particularly... Um, well... Let me explain. Japan does not have a joint custody system. If you are married in Japan and you have children and you divorce, um, typically one parent will get all the rights to the kids and the other parent divorces both the other spouse and the kids and has no access. Um, there is also no um, enforcement system. There's no real family court per se. There is a family court, but they have no enforcement system, so you can't have uh, custody orders and, and, and you don't have bailiffs that can enforce custody orders. So even if you change the law to have a joint custody system and enforce, you know, like entitlement to time with kids and whatnot, um, there's no ability to enforce that in Japan. So Japan basically has a 19th century family law system, um, which has no concept of joint custody after divorce. I mean, it barely even has a, cust a concept of divorce, which is funny because divorce actually is very easy in Japan. You just have to fill out a form. <laughs> Literally, you just have to fill out a form. Well, if both people sign it, you fill out a form. And if the other person won't sign it, which often men don't want to sign because they don't want to pay alimony, um, then you can go uh, to a family court and get them to, um, you know, to do the divorce uh, in, in the absence of the other spouse, even if they don't agree. But that's more hassle to go through. Typically, you want them to agree. But just the same as getting married. There's no church. There's no there's no ceremony. There's no cooling off period. There's no judges things. Um, you just go get the form, fill it out like you are, you know, putting in a change of address form and you're divorced. But what that means legally is that, yeah, you one typically one spouse doesn't meet, see the rest of their family. And this lack of a joint custody system in Japan is behind actually not just particularly foreigners. It's also there's an increasing uh, movement within Japan, particularly because it's more often women that get the custody of the child. There is a movement for men to seek a joint custody system after divorce. But it's not so big in Japan because, like I said, this country has never had. It's like it's like having a country that's never had ice cream before. You know, and, and some people, of course, you know, are going to start lobbying for it when they hear that it exists, but they've never had it before. So it's hard to lobby for something that you've never really had before, and, and where most people accept it's the norm. Uh, but in Japan, there is an increasing movement towards uh, joint custody. Um, and of course, uh, the biggest problem is in international marriages, where in most developed countries, there are joint custody systems after divorce and rights of visitation and access to kids and so on. And, um, you know, when you are to marry someone in Japan, most of those people don't realize that Japan doesn't have that sort of a system. And when you get divorced, as happens in like 60% of international marriages, um, people are surprised to then learn that they have just divorced their kids as well as their wife. And that causes a lot of problems. There is currently a Frenchman uh, on hunger strike in front of the Olympic Stadium demanding that Japan, um, this has had two consequences which i've talked about before by the way the first is that um japan uh, wasn't a uh, party to the hate convention on parental aspects of child abduction which is when parents in a custody dispute where one of them snatches the kids and runs away um, and typically they'll run away to a different country to avoid the custody orders of another country and this was the problem back in the day that you'd have an american and a french person and they get divorced and you know the uh, one parent would take the child to france and in each country the difference spouses the different parent would get a custody order saying that the kid belongs here and then you've got this international law problem that you have these you know the the other spouse can be arrested if they enter the other country um and this was you know causing a lot of uh acrimony one it was encouraging child uh abduction and um you know uh arrestable child a uh, child abduction by parents and so the system that was set up to address it was the the Hague Convention, which basically said all the family courts in France and America would agree on a certain set of protocols that if there was already an order in America, um, they, they, they're not going to allow a parent to gain an upper hand by taking the child to France. The French court will uphold the French custody order and will send the kids back to America to sort it out, you know, rather than allow parents to shop around for a better solution. This is, uh, most of the world is now signed up to this, but Japan didn't sign up to this because Japan doesn't even have custody orders at all. And, you know, and this meant that uh, where most, in most of the world, this kind of problem of parents abducting their kids to keep them away from the other spouse was resolved in Japan. Um, Japan, again, practically encouraged Japanese to take their kids back to Japan. 
um, and, and when when foreign parents came to Japan, like chasing after their kids, they would find that um, one there was no Hague system to sort out and uh, send the kids back. And worse still, even when they lived in Japan, or even if you were in Japan and uh, living in Japan, and you get divorced, um, uh, you expect to uh, have a custody arrangement, which, by the way, is a parameter on the divorce form in Japan. You can put in uh, planned arrangements with the kids, but you don't have to fill it in. It's like an optional field, and if it's absent, typically, you know, it'll be the mother by default but one of the parents will have all the rights so yeah they get to japan they find out that there is no joint custody system and uh as a result and this is a problem as well where the hate convention japan finally under international pressure signed up to the hate convention system and this uh only this didn't address the the tens of thousands of cases of abducted uh, kids estranged from one of their parents uh you know up until the very recent time that japan signed the hate convention those were still uh, unresolvable but theoretically it was there for the cases after but this was only resolvable in cases where a child was removed from a foreign country and brought to Japan or vice versa. It didn't do anything to affect the cases of uh, divorce of couples in Japan. So again, there's this French person who's on a hunger strike out in front of the Olympic Stadium who's demanding the creation of a joint custody system in Japan. And he's not alone in this. There are Japanese people themselves who have gone to the uh, Supreme Court saying that the lack of there being a joint custody system is uh, an infringement on the, the rights of Japanese people. Uh, the, fan, the, the Supreme Court didn't agree, but they did suggest that the government should look into it. And the government sort of look, is looking at it, but, you know, traditional family values, they don't want to do any sort of system which uh, makes divorce easier or more attractive. So, um, yeah, basically this uh, French man uh, look, basically looking to draw attention to this issue is doing that. And uh, Macron is agreeing to go, come and talk to him and to lobby on his behalf. And the EU recently also criticized Japan for not having a joint uh, family custody system or, or a satisfactory system for handling. Um, the many, many EU citizens, of course, caught in divorce, divorces involving Japanese people. Um, either being cross-border or just from living in Japan, frequently end up in the system where they discover that they, they can't see their kids anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, the EU and Macron, I think quite rightly, are putting pressure on the Japanese government to uh, come into line with international practice on this and uh, develop a family law system, which is a big thing to do. And it's a big change, but uh, why wouldn't you do that, right? So... Um, it's funny, I'm actually, on the one hand, you know, this is kind of uh, gaiatsu, this is foreign companies putting pressure on Japan, but it's a correct thing to call out. And I actually, although um, <laughs> Macron, you know, I, I, I'm not sure how much I like him as a person, it is it is the right thing for him to be speaking up on. Uh, and uh, we'll see if it pays. Again, this sort of thing tends to snowball and have effect, you know, that'll pay off down the road, but hopefully it does. So it's an interesting case, and I've mentioned it on here before. But it is something, certainly, if you are ever getting into an international marriage or having kids with people in Japan, uh, something to know about that, um, yeah, you've got no legal rights here. Particularly, it's usually the Japanese parent, often e even the father, that will uh, take the kid um, in a divorce situation. And yeah, they're, 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 this, this Frenchman is being supported by a number of uh, foreign wives who are in the same situation who have uh, lost their kids. Uh, guys English world do I mention the father yeah that's exactly the story that I am mentioning I forget his name but uh, that's what that story is about Macron is actually going to go and meet the person Dan H this is the same story I talked about last week is the man on hunger strike because of the Japanese wife stealing the child from the husband bear in mind the, the issue that Macron is actually seeking talks about is that you could say that the, the, the mother's stolen the child, but that's legal in Japan. That's actually the, the, the divorce system here. You have to realize that you don't have rights if you divorce. Um, I believe, I don't know if the case of the, the, um, uh, of the hunger strike, I, I don't recall if that was actually a divorce case or just a separation. Sometimes it happens, of course, when they're not um, even divorced. But of course, the point is that there's no system of enforcement for parental rights or child rights of access to the parents. So... Yeah, you know, it would be characterized as a child abduction or child stealing in other countries, but in Japan, it's actually the family law system.